living room or in your office or in a bank or whatever public place where you are may the Lord touch you and speak to you as we talk about Satan's weapon of choice part two the book of Acts chapter 4 the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 32 down to chapter 5 and I will begin reading now now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul neither did anyone say that the neither did any say that any of the things he possessed was his own but they all they had all things in common verse 33 and with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all that the fall nor was there anyone among them who lacked for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of those things that were sold and laid them at the apostles feet and they distributed each one as anyone had need verse 36 is where my message begins today and joseph who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement. A Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. But a certain man, chapter 5 and verse 1, but a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and he kept back part of the proceeds his wife also being aware of it and brought a sudden part and laid it at the apostles feet but Peter said to Ananias this is the key pillar the second pillar of my message today verse 3 but Peter said Ananias why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? Verse 4 is very important. It's the third pillar of my message. While it remained in your hands, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who had these things. And the young man arose and wrapped him up, carried him out and buried him. Now it was about three hours later. Can you imagine? When that are going situations. Verse 7, <laughs> now it was about three hours later when his wife came in not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, yes, for so much. Verse 9, then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young man came in and found her dead and carried her out and buried her by her husband. 
Verse 11 and the last one. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who had these things. Father, in the few minutes that I have, I ask that you blow me like a trumpet and allow me to bring your word with clarity such that a child in this service will hear you speak. And the greatest of all scholars in this church will hear you speak. Because that's how you are. You're God who speaks to your children in Jesus' name. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Let's go back to the beginning of where we were on the screen, on the scripture, on verse 36. I told you last Sunday, but one, when I talked about Satan's weapon of choice, I told you that every time God wants to do something concerning man, every time God wants to do something here on earth, he looks for a man or for a woman and gives them the mission and the vision. God works with man. God works with people. God works through people and God likes working in partnership with humanity. That is his nature. That's how he is. I also made you to know that God likes getting glory when he uses pieces of clay like you and me because we are clay. Without the breath of God, we decompose. We die. Without the life of God in our nostrils, without the breath of life, we die. And we become clay, we become manure. And God likes working with, with mortal men. He likes using people that are considered weak. People that are considered pliable. People that are considered you know incapable you know and people that are judged by others as useless god likes getting glory when he manifests himself and uses such people to glorify himself he gets greater glory and he is honored and respected and he gets glory by using such people because it is his agenda to use men and women irrespective of their family backgrounds of their financial status the same God who uses men as an enemy an adversary a fallen angel called Satan Satan served in the kingdom of God he was head of protocol while he, was, while he was Lucifer, the archangel, he was head of protocol in heaven. He was also in charge of worship in heaven. That's why the devil hates worship and worship us. He led the creation to bow before her holy God. And as he saw people, as he saw mountains bow, as he saw Tree, the tree and the oceans praise and the creation of God worshiping and bowing and the angels bowing before God he coveted that honor he desired to be like one of them he desired to get that glory he desired to get that honor but in the wrong way and he chose to overthrow God and he was cast out of heaven with a third of his angels who believed in him and his doctrine of rebellion and hell was created for them and they were chained they stand chained in hell because of rebellion God hates rebellion the same devil while he was worshipping and serving God realized that God likes using people and he also chose as Satan to use people. Before, God, before Satan uses a giraffe, before Satan uses a donkey, 
before the devil uses a tree he will have exhausted the human beings that are available and what the devil does is he picks up an innocent person an innocent brother or sister or man whether in the business community or in school or in a work environment or in your family your very family where you come from satan anoints somebody he chooses somebody and uses them as a tool to destroy and to scatter to maim and to cripple the dreams and the work of God's children and the kingdom of God he has never stopped weaponizing people turning innocent men and innocent women young or old into a weapon to destroy God's plan and purpose of a people's lives or even a ministry like this one if the devil wants to scatter this flock if Satan wants to scatter this great church this great ministry he will not use the trees around he will look for one man or one woman and anoint them and turn them into a weapon and while they are in his hand he will scatter this flock whether through a rumor or something real he will anoint one person not two because one tool of the devil one weapon in the hands of the devil in this church is enough to recruit more than 500 people from this church and scatter this flock within a week that person will not look like the devil will not have become the devil they will still have been used by the devil as satan's weapon of what of choice god in his majesty and power <clears throat> has also placed in your heart and in my heart and in the heart and the mind of those who are watching me on television he has also given us something called will w i l l will what is to will to will is to purpose to will is to decree or to determine that's why the bible says this is the day that the lord has made the lord makes the day the lord gives you and gives me the day but the rest of the scripture says therefore i will hi bishop titus by you my brother duncan you my sister joyce you are when the lord makes the day when the lord creates the day and gives it and brings it to you then you and me ask to choose have to will have to determine have to degree to do what church to rejoice and be glad in it or not 